Greetings, sir and sirette, and welcome back to TerraTech with me, Lathrax, and of course, welcome to a truly fantastic update, which has added two new weapons, which could very easily be my two new favourite weapons in all of TerraTech. In addition to this, we are covering a few changes to reticule research and the R&D labs themselves. As you can probably tell already, the tiles now are a lot less overwhelming as they were in the previous video, although honestly, I kind of liked the last tile. There was a lot lot of negative feedback about it. I could certainly see why a lot of people didn't like it. It was very, very vibrant, and it did cause a few issues when you're trying to make text and you're trying to do fine detail, and the background is that extreme. So now, I think this is the best kind of medium. It's a lot more colourful than the original, but it's still very easy to distinct the ground from everything else you're doing, so I do really like that. And there are also loads of new blocks being added. Now, when it comes to the new blocks, we have a load in the standard block section over on Rescue Research. And before I forget, there is now the ability to reskin this corporation so that it goes back to the original colour scheme, that is. Actually, no, it's not quite the original colour scheme. I was going to say the original colour scheme of the experimental, but it seems a little bit off, actually. Okay, I'll have to do some more testing later with weapons I've definitely seen before. Yeah, I think that's a little bit different. Actually... Looks really nice. I could easily blend with GSO, maybe even Hawkeye a little bit, and definitely things like the new colour scheme with better future. Okay, I did not notice that before, but either way, you can now change the colour scheme, and there are new standard blocks, all for reticle research, and it's all of these over here. So loads of new building options, which I really, really like. But now we get on to the fun part, the brand new weapons. Now, like I say, these two weapons may be my all-time new favourites. So first of all, we have this, the Hive Missile Launcher. It looks fantastic, it has a truly magnificent animation, and then it is just missiles, missiles everywhere. Now, these things aren't the strongest because, well, there's so many of them, their range is really good, but the main thing I've noticed is their tracking is insane. If you fire one direction, they can easily go all the way back around your craft and then hit the enemy. So what I want to do is build a tech which has loads of these missiles facing backwards. Because I think it will just look so, so phenomenal. Now, with the tracking though, you do have to be in range to target the enemy. So it can be a little bit shorter range than it really looks. But yeah, easily just one of the most devastating looking of all the missile weapons. And then we have this for Hawkeye. The Hawkeye Type 45 Naval Gun. Finally, a consistent source of explosive damage. I haven't done all that much testing with this, other than the fact it looks utterly amazing. I believe it can turn in any direction, but I will be testing that in just a moment. In fact, we can go and do that now and look at the damage they can deal before we build a tech to see these two weapons in action. I want to build a tech using the Type 45 naval gun, and I want to use one using the Hive missile launchers. And with the missile launchers, I've got a pretty interesting idea of what I'm going to do. There are also a lot of other changes, as you can see. We have the floating logo over there now. We have this billboard. There's loads of small changes. In fact, the target area specifically has a quite a nice aesthetic change. Here we are with the testing apparatus. As you can see, the enemy is now a box, which is actually a really good change because it means you're not sometimes missing and sometimes having trouble trying to test out the aiming of certain weapons, especially homing weapons. So, it turns out, with the battleship cannon, however, with the naval gun, I should say, it can only do a 90 degree arc, which is actually very obvious when you look at the hitbox. I have no idea how I missed that. So, upside to this, it means the hitbox isn't quite as insane as I thought it was, which means stacking them won't be quite as bad, although it's still very extreme. And downside, of course, is just getting a proper broadside in craft might be a bit more difficult. Still, though. 4,200 DPS, really consistent, good area of effect. This is going to be a go-to for me whenever I want explosive damage. Now, with the glorious missiles, we're going to get nice and far away and fire backwards. Well, technically firing forwards, but the missiles are going backwards. Or going behind us, is what I should say. These are pretty much going to be able to counter anything, including very agile targets. Making a loop. Some hitting the ground there. 
So the DPS is 2,500. Maybe a little bit less. So not the most DPS, but not exactly a huge weapon. And the fact it's almost guaranteed to hit the target with explosive damage, that's going to be fantastic. But the explosions are so small, they might be countered by half-decent shields. Okay, two things I want to test here before I build my first build, and that is this. Can the tracking be reliable once you are out of range of targeting an enemy? Secondly, will the explosions from this thing get through those shields? Now, I just did a really quick test with the cruise missile, and the cruise missile does loads of damage through the shields. Because of the huge blast radius, it's still hurting the blocks underneath. How about these ones? I'm thinking probably not. Or not all of them, at least. As you can see, not all of the missiles are tracking depending on where they're being fired, which is a problem. With the cruise missiles, they're all going to land on target. It's even worse now. Still, that's actually okay, though. I thought it was worse than that, so it's better than I expected. Now let's get close. Oh, wow, no. Oh, occasionally a little bit of damage going through. That's going to make them worse versus shielded targets. Now, of course, that damage is still going to be drained from the battery, but so would a normal cruise missile. It still damages the shield, but then the blast goes through, hurts the blocks underneath, which then need to be repaired. Smaller shields, yeah, the damage is still getting through. And there's the blast radius you can kind of see on the target. Okay, good to know. So then, what I'm going to do is actually quite simple. I'm going to build a very tanky craft, the missiles are going to be facing backwards. The front is going to be a solid block of armor and shields. The idea is the front is incredibly armored, and then the missiles simply go over the entire tech and hit the target in front. Now, don't expect a particularly intricate build. It's already 2 a.m. here because I am recording this way too late, like I normally do. And I just want this as a quick test. Okay, the front armor needs to go up a little bit more. And then, oh, that is beautiful. I'm probably destroying YouTube's bitrate. Excellent. So there's the problem with having them on the back, obviously. As soon as you lose that lock, well, yeah. You can't really hit anything. But that is just so pretty. Okay, enough of us watching that. Let's uh, finish this thing off, shield it up, make sure the front doesn't drag anymore, and then we'll go and give it a test against some real enemies. Now, of course, this is the extreme. We have 12 of these guns. Realistically, I don't think I'd ever build anything with more than probably four, but I just want to see the extreme. So I've decided I'm going to be a little bit less extreme with this. And rather than going with 12, we're just going with 6. Because that's really not all that much. Just this space full of armaments. I may try 12 later. Anyway, this is more just to make sure that this kind of idea would actually work. That's a lot of missiles. Yes, it certainly would. Shouldn't have let go of fire then. Oh wow, so it has to actually undergo the entire animation of it turning off before it can start to restart again. Now normally I would have just backed up then, the problem is this tech actually gets stuck on that ramp. Yeah, the damage isn't that extreme. I really do feel like against a very heavily armoured or honestly just heavily shielded opponents, these are going to struggle unless in some serious number. Excuse me, sir. Can you please go away? Thank you. Now, is doing something like this better than just having them on the top facing forwards? No, clearly not. I just wanted to see if building something like this was possible and a fun option, and it really is.
Oh, wow, look at that. Almost none of those missiles are doing damage through the shield. But there we go, finally. And the target is removed. Maybe should have gave it the ability to back up and actually go through that ramp. That might have been better. Okay, back to 12. One thing I'm starting to think is perhaps a really agile craft would actually do really well with these missiles. Because you have the capability of having a weapon which will always be able to reach the target, no matter how fast you're going and, wow, the angle, you could just run circles around the enemy and just bombard them to all hell. Which would be wonderful. Yeah. Do I love these weapons? Yes. Do, do I do a good job with this? Less so. Do I do a good job with this? I need to get some sleep. But do I do a good job with this? Do I? No. Okay, so it needs to be one higher up. If I try and turn this, it simply won't work. Okay. So that's about as close as you can really stack them. Though I think now I can actually put this further forward. You could do that. I'm not gonna, but you could. They are still a little bit clunky to build around, but definitely possible. So I was thinking, we could make a kind of floating battleship in the future, especially since, well, just look at them. They're obviously designed for that, hence the name, hence what they're based off. Of course, they go on some kind of ship. But here's the thing. The recoil is horrendous. If only three of these, it is knocking us back. And this is with a really strong gyro. And this thing actually actively trying to lean forwards. Still possible, just kind of hate that knockback. That's going to drive me mad. I also wish you could stack them a little bit better than just every two. So I think I'll probably end up doing is pushing each of them back by one to make it look a bit more natural. Having three on the front and then perhaps missiles or something else on the back. Something like that. It'll probably still work. Yeah, you can definitely build around these. If I can do that and make it look okay-ish in like 10 seconds... I think someone who's actually good at building could make them look phenomenal. Well, this little fella isn't really going to earn any awards for pretty much anything, honestly, but it will get the job done. It has three of the new weapons, it has an okay amount of armour, it actually has quite a lot of batteries, so it should be able to hold up pretty darn well. Three, two, one, and we have our first enemy. Who was pretty frail, to be fair. Same again. Also, I'm not able to see the enemy's reticule at the start, and we're also facing the same enemy a few too many times here. Really cool looking enemy though, with lots of weapons. Perhaps a bit, a bit of a glass cannon. Excuse me. That must have been terrifying for that cab. The slow aiming of those turrets. Now, this is meant to match you up with enemies of the appropriate... There we go, difficulty. Yeah, these are utterly devastating. Now, will this one have shields if we leave it long enough? Actually allow it to turn on its shields? No, okay. It's that reliability, that constant damage. Also, um, yeah, a few too many corpse parts over there. I have to say, though, this is extremely satisfying. Ah, oh, that thing has fireworks! Okay, maybe I should get another tech on here just to spawn something different. And uh, clean up the place a little bit. Well, there's something we didn't test out. The target range. I mean, this is as you'd expect. Okay, let's see. Versus the smaller cube before it gets its shields up. How fast will it carve through it? Not as fast as I first would expect. Okay, the shields are now coming online anyway, so... 
So that's the area effect of those guns. Let's compare that with the larger variant, the old battleship cannon. Well, actually, no, they're not the larger variant. They're the smaller variant, I suppose. Slower but stronger. Yeah, that's got a much larger explosive radius. There's more shields online, and yet you can see how much damage that's doing. So again, shields, the original definitely wins out, but I feel like these are just going to be so good general purpose. Yeah, really good general purpose weapons. Fast firing, large enough explosive radius to deal damage even through quite decently shielded enemies. They can target the enemy if they're moving slightly, unlike the originals, which only have the slightest arc of fire in front of them. And they look awesome. I mean, come on, just look at these things. And there goes the shields. Okay, let's try and spawn in some other enemies. If not, we'll just spawn in something ourselves. Also, this is how they look in this colour. So this will likely spawn in things already seen, okay. So what I'll do then... Is I'll use another tech to spawn something in. Can this one please stop always turning into a single cab? Then we'll still use this though. Not you. You. Wow. I remember that being quick with the missiles, but not that quick. Stop with the single cabs! Yeah, that is insane. Okay, so for the sheer damage, these things are absolutely fantastic. Not exactly a surprise by any stretch, but still. Okay, a moving target, and that was actually pretty easy. As long as the craft you're on is mildly agile, we're just basically able to turn. It's snowing. It's going to be great. Okay, well, with that, though, I'm afraid I am actually all out of time for today's video. Sorry if the video is a little bit all over the place, honestly, but over the last week, it has been a little bit insane over here. I've been going back to England and back here over and over again because my mum's still a little bit under the weather with the whole arm thing. And honestly, it's just been insane in every other way as well. There's been a leak on our roof, so there's been construction work all going on on the building above us, the flat above us, which is just insane. My fiance has been ill all week as well, so I've been looking after her. It's just, it's been a bit of a mess, so time has not exactly been kind to me. And as my speech and ability to even construct basic sentences goes away, thank you so much for watching. If you have enjoyed today's video, then of course, likes, favourite, shares, comments, all that good stuff helps out me, helps out the channel, and most importantly, shows that Terra Tech is a series you wish to see continued in the future. And now, I want to ask you a question. Which of the new weapons do you prefer? The Navy Cannons? Or the new Rocket Launchers? Personally, as much as I do love the new Rocket Launchers, I have to say, I think the new Naval Cannons probably beat it for me. They are just so fantastic to watch. I think they look amazing, and they're just going to be really good in the campaign. The missiles, a little bit more niche, but I think they're going to have some really, really good places, and I honestly think now a faster craft might do better with them. Or a flyer, but flyers are great anyway. So, thank you for watching. Have a lovely day. Do take care. And I'll see you next time, when I'll have a bit more time, and we'll do some proper building. Terratech is returning soon properly. That I promise. Soon, TM.